Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed Avania calipers and we realized that Avania calipers can be used to make measurements of relatively smaller lengths than a meter rule and its accuracy was 0.01 centimeters. We also discussed how to make readings of the, on this instrument and then finally we discussed the zero errors associated with Avania calipers. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss an instrument which can be used to make relatively smaller lengths than Avania calipers and we call it a micrometer screw gauge. And here we are going to discuss the general outlook of this instrument. Then we will discuss how to read this instrument and then we will discuss the zero errors in terms of a micrometer screw gauge. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how a micrometer screw gauge looks like, then discuss the accuracy of a micrometer screw gauge, then finally explain how to use a micrometer screw gauge to make measurements of an object. So the micrometer screw gauge is used to measure very small lengths like the diameter of a very thin wire and also this instrument can be used to measure the thickness of one sheet of paper so it means this instrument can measure very small that's why we call it micro micrometer screw gauge it can be used to measure very small lengths so this micrometer screw gauge consists of different parts here and i'm going to label it in number one the first one here is the anvil the anvil then we have the adjusting screw as number two. Then we have a U flame, that is number three. We have the speedle, the speedle here, number four. The speedle is the, and the anvil and the one that will hold the object. Then we have the sleeve, number five. The sleeve consists of two scales. It has a linear scale and it has a sleeve scale. We're going to discuss them later. Then we have a thimble, thimble here, number six a thimble which cons which have a scale which we call a thimble scale number seven then we have a ratchet number eight so it has these specific parts and each part plays a very important role so the micrometer screw gauge consists of a thimble the thimble as we have just mentioned carries a circular rotating scale which we call a thimble scale and the spindle the speedle, it has a speedle, this one here, number four. This speedle moves forward and backward when the thimble is being rotated. When you rotate this thimble, this speedle will be moving forward. If you have a relatively large object, the speedle will move backward. Then if you have a smaller object, as you rotate the thimble, this speedle will be moving forward so that it can grip the object that you want to measure. Then we have a, a ratchet, the one that you can see here, number eight. The ratchet at the end of the thimble prevents, the function of that ratchet is to prevent the user from exerting more pressure on an object when the micrometer screw gauge is in use. When you are making measurements using this instrument, you will be rotating the thimble. When this speedle approaches the object, you stop rotating the thimble and then you rotate the ratchet. The ratchet will make a very fine movement which when the, 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 the speedle is in contact with the object, the ratchet will make a click. So once it makes the first click, you stop rotating. Otherwise, if you continue rotating, it will uh, exert more pressure on the object. And if the object is fragile, then it's going to break. So the, in the market, we also have other micrometer screw gauges, and we have what we call digital micrometer screw gauge, and they use uh, digital devices they have a screen where you just in for, for put your object inside then you rotate your ratchet as you rotate you don't have to read the scale the scale will display on the screen that one we will discuss them later so a micrometer screw gauge has two scales one is found on what we called a sleeve then the other one is found on the thimble so on the sleeve we also have two other scales one week on the upper part we call it a linear scale linear scale and it's graduated in millimeters then on the lower part 
we have what we call a slave scale and is graduated in a half a millimeter. So if you read one division on the upper part, you are reading one millimeter. Then if you read one division on the lower part, then you are reading a half or 0 0.5 millimeter. Then on the thimble scale or on the thimble, we have a scale which we call a thimble, thimble scale. And this thimble scale in different micrometer screw gauges, sometimes it has 50 divisions. And in other thimble scales, we call it a hundred, we, it has a hundred divisions. So when you have a thimble scale which has 50 divisions, when you rotate this thimble and it rotates through those 50 divisions, or when you have a hundred uh, micrometer screw gauge with a hundred divisions, if you rotate the thimble and it rotates through the hundred divisions, then we call that one the pitch of the micrometer screw gauge. The pitch of a micrometer screw gauge is the distance moved by a spindle for one or in one complete rotation of the thimble. So if a thimble rotates one complete rotation, one complete rotation in this case, it means if it's a 50 division thimble scale, then it rotates 50 division. If it's a 100 division thimble scale, then it rotates 100. When it rotates 50 and it's a 51, we say that it's a pitch. If you measure the distance rotated by this spindle, then that will be the pitch of that micrometer screw gauge. And we're going to discuss its significance shortly. So from the two scenarios that we have just looked at, if you have two micrometer screw gauges with different pitch, in this case, we have the first one with 50 divisions. In this case, if the thimble scale rotates once, then the spindle will rotate a distance or will move a distance of 0 0.5 millimeters and this one we call it the pitch of this micrometer screw gauge then if you have another micrometer screw gauge with 100 divisions so this, when this one when the thimble rotates one complete rotation then the spindle will cover a distance of one millimeter so in this case it will cover one millimeter when the thimble rotates once but in this case, in 50 division, it will cover 0 0.5 millimeter. Then the, in this case now, we can use this number of divisions and the distance covered by the speedle to find out what one division on a thimble scale represent. So in this case, if we use our simple math, if 50 divisions produces 0 0.5 millimeters, then what will one division produce? So in this case, it will be 50, not 50, but one, one division times 0 0.5 millimeters. Then you divide it by 50 divisions. So in this case, this division will cancel out with that. Then we will remain with one division is equals to 0 0.01 millimeter. So for a 50 division micrometer screw gauge, whose pitch is 0 0.5 millimeters, one division on a thimble scale makes the spindle to move a 0 0.01 millimeter. Then if we go to the second micrometer screw gauge with 100 divisions, if the Micro, if the thimble rotates one complete rotation, it makes uh, the speedle makes 1.0 millimeters. So in this case, if 100 divisions makes the speedle to move one millimeter, then one division, how many millimeters will the speedle rotate or move? In this case, it will be one division times one millimeter divided by 100 divisions. So in this case, if division goes with this, we will remain with our units in millimeters and one divided by 100, then it's going to be one division is equals to 0 0.01 millimeter. So in either case, in either case for a 50 division or for a 100 division, 
when a tempo rotates once, it covers a distance of 0 0.01 millimeter. And this is what we call the accuracy. This is what we call the accuracy or the least count of a micrometer screw gauge. It means when the tempo rotates once, all the smallest value that you can read on this instrument is 0 0.01 millimeter. This is different from the vanilla calipers that we looked at. Since in a vanilla calipers, it, the accuracy is 0 0.01 centimeter. In this case, it's 0 0.01 millimeter. So this list count, you want to use it uh, whenever you are making measurements. And whenever you read one division on a simple scale, you are going to multiply it with 0 0.01. That is the accuracy of the micrometer screw gauge. So now we can discuss how to use this instrument, which we call a micrometer screw gauge. And for you to use this instrument, then you place the object. This is the object that we have. You place this object in between the anvil and the spindle. This is the spindle. So you place the object in between there. Then now you will adjust or close this ratchet. You will you close the ratchet until it slip only once on this object. So you will just adjust it until it makes a once one click, then you stop. Then in this case, when it slips once, then you will read your scale. Now here we have two scales as you saw. We have this one here, which is on this on this on the on this sleeve, which we call the sleeve scale, and then we have the thimble, which has a thimble scale. Remember, on the sleeve scale, what we read there is in millimeters, and then on the thimble scale, what we read there is in one over one hundred millimeters. So in this case, what we will read, we will multiply it with the accuracy that is 0 0.01 on the thimble scale. So here, if we want to read the slip scale, if this is 0, then the next mark here is 1. The, 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 the third one here is 2, 3, 4. Then below it, this scale down here, which we call the slip scale, we said it also represented a half a millimeter. So in this case, this is 0 0.5, this is 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5. So in this case, if we read the slip scale in this case here, we can record it as 4.5. So the slip scale in that case is reading 4.5 millimeters. Then now, we can also read the simple scale, and the simple scale we read it down up. So in this case, we read a value which is in line with this horizontal line of this uh, sleeve scale. So we read any value which will be in line with this point here, and we read it from down up. So in this case, we will read as 20, 21. So this sleeve, this simple scale is reading 21. But 21, we said we multiply it with the accuracy. The accuracy is 0 0.01. So we will have 0 0.21 millimeter. So this is what it reads on the simple scale. So the simple scale here, you will record what you have as 21 in this case. Then now you multiply with the accuracy, which is 0 0.01. Then here you are going to get 0 0.21 millimeter. Then now for you to get the total reading, of this micrometer screw gauge, you will add the slip scale reading added to the simple scale reading. Like in this case now, micrometer reading, this micrometer reading will be, the slip scale reading is 4.5, then plus the simple scale reading is 0 0.21, then everything here will be in a millimeter. Then in this case, it will be 4, 0.71 millimeter. So in this case, you could have read your instrument correctly. Remember what we do? You read this scale on the sleeve scale. The upper part represents a millimeter. The lower part represents a, a half a millimeter. So if this is 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5. And then on the you record it in millimeter. And then on the simple scale, you record a value which is in line with the horizontal line on the sleeve scale. 
and in this case it's 21. 21 you multiply it with the accuracy you get in millimeter and then you add the two then you get you are reading on the micrometer screw gauge so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss more examples on reading a micrometer screw gauge and later we will discuss the zero error